let's start talking about products and services and operations in those contexts. Let's start with, let's talk a little bit about service providers, the, uh, the difference between our operations management in the services context. Uh, transformation processes occur in all organizations regardless of why their products or what they, whether they produce and what their objectives are. For most organizations, the ultimate objective is for the, to, to produce outputs that are worth something, worth more than the combined cost of all the inputs. But unlike tangible goods like products, physical products, services are effectively actions or performances that must be directed towards the consumers who are going to use them. Thus, there's a significant customer contact component to most services, regardless of the level of customer contact. Service businesses try to provide some level of standardized process, and they have technology that supports them at the interface in order to create an automatic and structured response in some way. Customers have expectations. The goal is to use these standardized processes to deliver on those expectations. The ideal service provider will be both high tech, meaning using good technologies and process, but also high touch. That is, have a good customer contact, customer interface, a good, good training, and a good experience for the customers. The output generally is intangible and might even be perishable, like a meal or whatever, or even an event like a cruise. You're on the cruise and that whole experience uh, disappears after you're gone. Few services can be saved, stored, resold, or returned, but rather they are either they either meet the expectations, the quality expectations of the customers, or they don't as they're being delivered. Manufacturers and service providers or service uh, service kind of operations have some differences, and they could generally be classified into five different or five different uh, continuums. On the one hand is the nature of the consumption of the output. Generally, service providers require a higher degree of customer contact when they deliver their service at the point of consumption rather than production, which the products can be pushed out the factory door and sold through third parties. There's also the uniformity of inputs. Generally, manufacturers are very careful to control variability of their inputs, and they do that to produce very low variability in their outputs. Uh, sometimes that can be hard to do in customized services that are delivered to customers through services. The third is the uniformity of outputs. Um, due to differences in people, including employees and customers, services generally has a uniqueness associated with the delivery for each customer. Each customer has unique needs and temperament. When you're delivering service, there's a lot more of that soft touch kind of uh, delivery that's part of the quality experience that the customers have. Um, a lot of times the service is intangible as well, which means you only have one, shot, one chance to deliver it well. Fourth, the labor required, as you would expect, services are often much more labor intensive, particularly in the delivery process. Someone just doesn't come in and take something off the shelf. There's a human being involved in the entire delivery process. Um, automation in terms of like uh, web applications and the like are adding some aspects of automation, but still there's a lot of service, a lot of uh, human interaction associated with the delivery. And then the management of productivity um, is also another criteria because whenever you're in a factory, you can design processes that are efficient, get good feedback, uh, put robotics in place and the like. In service, it can be more difficult to do that and manage your productivity. Let's look at Subway, for example. Subway has a lot of inputs for their sandwiches. The quality of those inputs are important. Essentially, they're delivering a product, which is a sandwich, but they're also delivering the experience to the customer of getting the sandwich that has high quality ingredients delivered in the way they want it. You can get exactly the meat you like, with the cheeses you like, with the dressings you like, and, um, and the uh, other sorts of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of additives that are provided on the sandwich and the drinks and the like. So there's a, there's a product and a service experience associated with the subway operating model. Inputs, outputs. Talk a minute about planning for products. Before a company 
can produce a product, it first has to figure out what it's going to produce. And they have to ask customers what the customers want and then test with the customers that they're going to be delivering the kind of product or services that they're hoping to deliver. Um, it must determine what processes you'll then take to, to create that product, to build that product. Um, and then you also have to figure out how you're going to produce that product and deliver it. And these decisions are the overall operations planning process. Marketing works with product development, which we'll talk about in a minute, to develop a product, but then how you're actually going to deliver it with consistent value and consistent delivery process is the operations problem. Before making the product, the company has to determine what the customers want, but also to do that, you need to also figure out how, the, how you're going to identify customer needs. Um, this is often done through the marketing function. Marketing research is done with focus groups and the like. We'll talk about that in a later module on marketing. But then you decide what kind of goods and services you want. Um, marketing research can figure out the demand so you could, figure, you could determine how much of each input you have to buy, how much to produce uh, to satisfy that demand. Uh, and the market environment can change as well. Uh, developing a product can be lengthy and it can be expensive. Once management has come up with the idea, the problem of delivering it in the right quantities in the right locations to customers becomes the operations challenge. Within a company, typically engineering and research development groups, uh, research and development departments, turn the product idea into a workable design that can be produced economically, but it's up to the operations managers to plan on how to put that design into place, where to put the factories, how to des design the factories, how to put the processes in place, where to buy the parts, all of those things to put the product and the design into effect to satisfy market demand. The quantities, the people that you need, the skills that you need to develop the product, all the actual processes, the manufacturing equipment, software and hardware designs, all of those things are put into place. And that's the, uh, the operations uh, challenge. And we'll talk about the operations design in the next, the, the operations process in more detail in the next lecture.